Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for um, coming to the webinar um, this evening. Uh, my name is Hannah, and I am the Head of Business Development at um, On Purpose. And this evening, you're going to be hearing from me um, and um, uh, my colleague Camilla at On Purpose, uh, and also from um, Rich uh, at Charity Fast Track about um, about our programmes and how we can help you transition to a career uh, with impact. Um, just some some um, sort of technical things about how the webinar is going to work. So as you can see on the agenda, there is some time for Q&A at the end. So what we uh, would kindly ask is if you do have any questions um, whilst the webinar is going on, um, would you please put them in the chat and uh, Camilla is going to facilitate a Q&A um, at the end um, or we can address them as we're going on. Whilst the webinar is in progress, I think probably after, what is it, three weeks of lockdown now, you're probably all used to um, video conferences, but if you could all stay on mute so that the sound quality is good for everybody, then, then that would be great. Um, in terms of a bit of a run through, I'm going to start, um, and Camilla and I are going to give you a bit of an overview of On Purpose and what that program entails. Then you're going to hear from Rich, um, the same thing for Charity Fast Track. And then there will be an opportunity to hear from some people that have been through both of the programs. So Borja and Rob are both On Purpose fellows who are going to tell you a bit about their experience. And then Laura, uh, Gwendolyn, Laura, Nora and Des uh, have all been through the Charity Fast Track program and will give you some information about their experiences. Cool. So um, just to kick off, so as I've said, my name is Hannah and I'm the head of BD and recruitment at On Purpose. I'm joined by my colleague Camilla. Um, say hello, Camilla. Hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm Camilla from On Purpose. I joined uh, the company one year ago uh, after having worked uh, for eight years in marketing in multinational companies. So yeah, I'm really proud of being part of the team and being part of a, an organization that aims to bring social and environmental impact. Great. Uh, and similarly to, to Camilla, my journey was um, I worked in advertising uh, for about six years before doing the On Purpose program myself. I finished the program in October 2019 and after staying on at my second placement which I'll tell you a bit more about later uh, I've recently joined as the head of BD and recruitment. Um, so who here I can't actually see you but would you mind putting up your hands like this if you have heard of On Purpose or the associate program so that we can do a bit of a poll and Similarly, has anybody here uh, heard about the programme through a fellow or a current associate? Again, put up your hands. Cool, thank you. Um, well, through this presentation, we're just going to take you through um, some key elements um, of the programme. The, the first and most important being why does On Purpose exist? Uh, and really, On Purpose exists because we believe that we are facing uh, an ecological and economic crisis. Um, uh, we believe that the economic system that we currently have um, is not working for anybody, least of all the planet. We're using resources in an unsustainable way and this is stressing our planet. And we're also treating people poorly at the expense of others, meaning that many people cannot live fulfilled, happy lives. But also more importantly than that, and crucially, we think that the way our economy works is something that can be challenged and can change. We believe that it's a social construct and it can be redesigned to benefit people and the planet. And we know that we're not alone in thinking of this. So just today, the city of Amsterdam announced that they're going to be testing a different economic model based on donor economics by Kate Rayworth, which prioritizes living within the means of the planet, but also ensuring that you're providing for everybody's basic needs. But nor do we think as an organization that there is a silver bullet that's going to create change um, in the way that we need it to. Uh, and we believe this only by testing new forms of leaderships to, and creating new types of organisations and transforming old ones that we will find a way through the current crisis. And that is why, uh, through the associate programme and the wider work we do, On Purpose offers an opportunity for both organisations and individu individuals to experiment, challenge and debate new ways of leading and working. And we offer this opportunity to people who identify some or all of the, or all of the problems that we see in the world. Uh, and see that as aligned with their own values. 
Uh, and through On Purpose, we're creating a community of people who have a desire to do things differently. Uh, and now, after running the programme for 10 years, our community is spread across the world uh, and we're working to create a positive future in a wide range of areas. So some of the people that have done our programme have gone on to work in reforestation as a means of mitigating climate change. Others, as examples, are redesigning education systems to ensure that they serve children better. So we, we work across a wide range of um, impact areas. So the associate programme in one slide, uh, basically on purpose is a leadership programme for talented career changers. It's a one year programme for talented individuals who really want to um, develop their career so that it has a deeper impact and through which they can be part of a, a community and wider group of people that are helping to create systemic change. Um, we do work with career changers, so that's people that has, have existing work experience and are looking to both build on and use their current skills uh, in a new career where they can be sure that they're going to make a positive difference. So, and the programme is a full-time um, programme. It combines two work experience placements of six months um, and also the support of a dedicated coach and mentor and also uh, knowledge building and inspiration through weekly training sessions, which are focused both on self-development and improving your understanding of the impact space. Uh, we believe that by bringing together associates and our placement organisations, we can create immediate benefit for both parties and also create, increase the capacity of the impact space in a broader sense, bringing more people to this work and using our learning and development programme to help our associates better understand the impact space and their own ability to lead. So by the end of the year with On Purpose, you can expect to have tested two different impact areas and organisations and to have a clearer understanding of the complexity in the impact space and where you want to focus your work in the future. We don't promise by the end of the programme that we'll have answers to all of your questions, but we can guarantee that you will be asking better questions. So we think that the combination um, of our programme with the work experience, with the training and with the support through your mentor and coaching uh, will help you uh, develop your career in the impact space. And in addition to this, you'll have an amazing network at the end of it, which will help prepare you for a leadership role in social or environmental impact. Uh, but this is uh, just a slide about what people say about us. So as you can see that um, we've been very well reviewed by people that have done the programme and here are some quotes from uh, some recent associates. We've also uh, been very privileged to win um, one of the Escape the City's best 100 companies to escape to in 2019. So out of 100 companies that were um, mentioned, we came 14th out of 100. Uh, this is um, a picture of our lovely April 2019 cohort who have just left us. Uh, so we work with two cohorts each year, one that starts in April and one that starts in October. And we're currently recruiting for our uh, October 2020 cohort. Uh, in terms of where our associates come from, so we recruit from a wide variety of different sectors and backgrounds. Um, the, one, of the, one of the minimum stipulations is that you have to have had a minimum of three years work experience. Typically people do come from what we call commercial environments, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. So some of the types of work that people join from may be from the worlds of finance, advertising, engineering, consulting or law. But the more important thing is that everybody that joins the programme has a common desire to change the way they work. Uh, and to move into an organisation or to a role where they can make an impact. So through joining the programme, each of our associates quits their job and joins us for a year. And after that year, we, we're happy to say that 85% of them continue to work in work that has a social or environmental impact. And if you include um, fellows that work not necessarily in impactful organisations, but in impactful work, that goes up to 90%. Uh, in terms of who we look for, so there's basically four main areas um, that we're looking for our associates to prove that they have um, qualities in. The first of these is motivation and persistence. So we're looking for people who can demonstrate that they can seize opportunities and who aren't afraid to challenge themselves and to challenge others around them. Um, but equally, we want people that have got really good interpersonal skills throughout the year that you're going to be working with a wide variety of organisations and with different people. And we want to know that you can go into a placement and work successfully in a wide variety of situations. 
Um, we want people, in terms of attitudes and mindsets, we want people who are flexible and open to new ideas. It's a really exploratory year and you'll get a chance to try out um, lots of different things. So it's really important that you're open to new experiences, but it's also important that you're resilient um, and that you can adapt to different situations. Also, we want you to be able to tell us why you want to be part of this space. It's really important that um, the impact and wanting to make a difference is really important to you and what you want to achieve throughout your career. And lastly, um, we want people that, are, that have, uh, can demonstrate an ability to problem solve. And by this, we mean people that can break down challenges into manageable chunks and are able to analyze data and bring insight to a particular challenge. We want people that also can see the big picture, but also can deal with detail as well. So really we're looking for talented generalists that can go into a wide variety of different situations and work environments and be successful. In terms of the shape of the programme, um, we've talked a little bit about this, but there's four key elements to the, to the programme um, that we'll talk about a little bit more in detail. But as I've already mentioned, so you work with two organisations uh, for six months each, and you work with them for four and a half days a week, the other half of the day being your learning and development sessions on a Friday when you come to On Purpose. Um, you're also supported by a mentor, by two mentors in fact throughout the year, so you get one mentor for each of your placements who will help you with the, the problems and the challenges that you're working through in your placement. Uh, and you also are supported by a coach who is there to help you explore your own personal development and what you want to do after the programme. And finally, um, the lovely thing about On Purpose is that it is a massive community and it's a real opportunity through the programme to develop your network um, and meet lots of different people working in all different types of organisations across the impact sector. And in terms of our placements themselves, so these are some examples of placements that we are currently working with or have worked with in the past. So as you can see, there's quite a, um, a wide variety of different placements there. Uh, and it's important to stress that we are um, agnostic about the type of organisation that we work with. Uh, we work with charities, we work with commercial organisations because we recognise that there's many different ways to have an impact. And we want you to find where you think that you best fit. It's not for us to determine that. So and an example of some of the types of work that our associates have done uh, in placements could be something like, for example, one of our associates who just left worked on a business strategy for Mental Health First Aid England, um, where they helped them to respond to a rapid increase in demand for their services. We had an associate that worked with the first um, ever B Corp, B Corp law firm on defining, defining their impact strategy. Um, we had a, a, an associate who worked with Guys and St Thomas's charity on researching organisations in South London who are dealing with childhood obesity. Um, we've worked with um, associates who have launched reuse and recycle schemes for office carpets, and maybe Borja will tell you a bit more about that later. Uh, and we've worked, um, one of our associates has worked in a homeless charity uh, where they partnered with the Victorian Albert Museum to create furniture for people using homelessness shelters. There's a wide variety of different um, placements that you can uh, that you can do via on purpose. Uh, in terms of learning and development, so this is a really, really fundamental uh, and important part of the programme. So as I've mentioned, every Friday afternoon you come together with your cohort uh, for a learning and development session. Broadly, these are split into two different um, sections, the first one being developing you as a leader uh, and the second one developing your knowledge of the impact space. Uh, and I have to say, having done the programme myself, having every afternoon um, to come together to learn and, and, and focus on your own learning is a real, real privilege. It's not, it's not often that you get that time in life to come together with other people who are like-minded, who are willing to learn and really spend some time on yourself improving your knowledge and reflecting on who you are as a leader. Um, so in terms of when we look at the, the, the knowledge, build, knowledge building section of the, um, of the learning and development programme, so impact, as you might call it, some of the things that you might learn is how you fund impact, how you measure it, how you scale impact. Uh, and, and then on the leadership side, you, we'll be looking at how you connect yourself, how you lead a thriving organisation and how you can help drive systemic change. And to be more specific, some of the areas that we cover 
are social investment, philanthropy, we look at uh, Myers-Briggs and MBTI, we look at organisation design and development, how you can work in an agile way, we uh, talk you through how to put together a theory of change, uh, and you'll have training on strategy uh, and leadership from some top consultancy organisations. Um, I think we've mentioned community um, already, but it's important to stress that really throughout this year, there are many, many layers of support that you have as an associate. The first one there you can see being your placement. So every, every associate uh, in each placement has a dedicated line manager who will um, work with them on their, on their project and give them feedback uh, on how they're doing. Uh, the next layer out, you have your, your mentors who are there, who is a dedicated support to help you with your placement work. And you also, a really important and lovely part of the programme, you have your cohort. So um, alongside you, there will be uh, 16 to 20 people also doing the programme and they become a vital support network for you throughout the year. Uh, beyond that, you have your coach who, will, as I've said, um, help on your own um, personal development and help you think through what you want to do after the programme or even during. Uh, and beyond that, we have the wider on purpose community uh, and our networks throughout the, the impact space. And of course, you've got Camilla and I and the rest of the core team who are there um, throughout your journey. And then in terms of our impact, so this, so we've been going for 10 years now as an organization. And since then, we've worked with over 500 people, helping them to, to develop a career in the impact space. Since we launched, we've also now scaled. We have programmes running in Paris and Berlin. Um, our net promoter score for the last month was 82%, which means that 82% um, of people who have uh, completed our programme would rate the programme 9 or 10 out of 10. So 85% of our fellows um, now work in the impact space, as I've mentioned, and 92% of our fellows say that their purpose has, um, say that their career has purpose. Um, and we, in terms of what our fellows go on to after, afterwards, so we have a fellow who is now heading up a homeless organisation in Oxford. We have a fellow who set up a version of um, On Purpose but for refugees. We have a fellow who's founded an online newspaper for the impact space. Um, and we have a fellow who's working to make fishing more sustainable. So a wide variety of different roles that you can do after On Purpose. I think now Camilla is going to talk you through a bit more of the logistics about how you can join us. Great. Um, so now you've heard a lot about the program and I'm just going to explain how you can get involved with us. So the next slide. I'll pass on to the next one. Oh no. There you go. So in order to apply, uh, you have to register in uh, the interest in the program in our website. Uh, many of you might have already done that and may be receiving our emails and the application form link is sent via those emails with the deadline of 17th of May at midnight. Um, so yeah, just go to our website in case you haven't done that yet. And then in terms of your application, there are three core elements. Um, so as you can see on this slide, the motivation to join the program, kind of a cover letter. Uh, we really want to hear about your motivation to join the social program, why you are seeking change in this direction, and why do you think you're going to be good fit for the program. And then in terms of TV, uh, besides the up-to-date academic and career information. We also encourage you to add details of your volunteering and extracurricular activities. Um, and then finally, a one-minute video. So this is um, the point of having a video is because we, we want to see you as a whole person instead of rather just relying on your CV. So it's an opportunity for you to introduce yourself, share brief details about you, about your career, and uh, explain why you want to join the program. Uh, once you register your interest in the program, you will receive an example of a one minute video and in the instructions on how to upload uh, in case you need. So yeah, 
the next one, please. Yep. Great. So finally, these are the milestones, the main milestones of our recruitment process. Uh, all of this information is also on our website. Uh, so I'm, as I mentioned before, uh, 17th of May at midnight is the deadline to submit your application. And then after the deadline uh, on Purple Score team, we will start considering all applications and start making the invitation for interview. And the interviews will happen um, mid-June, beginning of July in central London uh, or online also if needed. And then finally, we are going to make the offers throughout July and August at the same time that we are going to be signing contracts with placement organizations. And then the program starts early October uh, with a three-day induction the associate program and then you start uh, a year as an associate. Thanks for the presentation, Rich. Um, and Hannah, thanks for the chance to, to share my story. Can you all hear me? Can you make a sign? Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, so like my, most people here, um, I have always wanted to make a difference through my career. Um, already before starting uni, um, I was I was quite clear in that I wanted to uh, to fight climate change, and I decided I wanted to study engineering because I love maths and building and stuff. And I don't know, it looked so easy back then. It looks uh, like very clear and easy, uh, but the things are never as you plan them. Um, and so, uh, Hannah, next slide, please. Yeah. Um, so the thing is that uh, with the economic situation that we were living in Spain uh, when I graduated, um, I couldn't really uh, work on what I wanted. I couldn't really uh, work in the renewable energy sector where I could uh, build uh, renewable energy systems to fight climate change and, and so on. That was not a possibility. Uh, but luckily I found the job. I found the job that I so much needed. And and through that job, a purpose was given to me. Uh, the purpose was uh, to maximize shareholder value by helping companies to be more efficient, which often meant uh, making people redundant. Um, so yeah, I was definitely making an impact, though it was not exactly the kind of impact that I wanted to make, especially when unemployment rates were so high in Spain. Um, so it took me it took me some time to gain the confidence and, and to save some money and to start uh, to, to start finding some meaning in my career and to be able to have the courage to to leave my my position uh, as a consultant um, so yeah I, I basically did it after a couple of years I, I left my position I went to Indonesia to volunteer and learn more about the social sector uh, I discovered how charities work and and I basically helped them uh, to start community businesses where they could be able uh, basically to, to make use of natural resources that they had to, to generate an income for uh, poor populations over there. Um, so it was, it was really a very sustainable project uh, for everyone, the environment and the people there, but not really for me uh, since I was only earning uh, 15,000 rupees a day, which is less than a pound a day. Um, so at some point I had to, to return and, and I did, I went back to Spain and, and, and then I tried to start my own company. Um, I tried to be a, I wanted to be a social entrepreneur, but I tried first to be just an entrepreneur. Uh, I found a couple of, of partners that uh, were, that had a great idea and they wanted me in the team and, and I joined them, uh, but, but we were really missing uh, a sense of direction and we didn't really have uh, shared values. And so our relationship uh, deteriorated over time, especially when we were not uh, making any money. And so eventually I, I had to step out of that. Um, and, and in 2018, I moved to London. Uh, I joined, uh, the, I, I was living in, in the Newspeak House, which is a community uh, in their intersection between technology and politics, uh, also for people who want to change the world. And it was through that network that I discovered on purpose. 
Thank you, Hannah. Um, so, so yeah, I was looking for opportunities to, to do good, but at the same time to be able to pay my rent. Um, and, and I felt that On Purpose was going to be a great platform to get me back on track professionally while working on very interesting and impactful projects. Um, and it worked well for that. The thing is that it was much more than that. It was not just a platform to help me find cool projects. Uh, I will explain more about that later. Uh, but yeah, first about my placements. Um, my two placements uh, ac quite accidentally uh, were on waste management or circular economy, if you want to be more fancy. Um, and so the first one was, was Interface. Uh, they are carpet manufacturers and they are leaders in sustainability. Um, they, they had a, a very, in, in the 90s, they, they were the first to have this bold vision to be carbon neutral uh, by 2020. Uh, and and they, they actually achieved that mission uh, last year, uh, halfway through the year. And so, so it's a very exemplary corporation in, in terms of sustainability. Uh, and my role there was to, to help them to implement a circular economy project where we would take back old carpet tiles from our customers and then uh, partnering with social enterprises across the UK uh, and Ireland, we would uh, even donate these carpet tiles or sometimes we would pay these charities for take the carpet tiles because there is a lot of work to recondition the carpet tiles and make them usable again. Um, so that was my first placement. Then the second placement was Systemic. They are a, a sustainability consultancy. Uh, they focus on three verticals. One is um, energy, uh, basically uh, transforming the, the way we produce energy. Uh, the other one is food and land use. And the third one is um, uh, materials use and, and materials efficiency or circular economy. And so I started uh, working with them first in the food and land use, in a, in a food and land use project. It was called the Food and Land Use Coalition. And there, um, it was really mind blowing for me. I, it was, I, didn't choose, I didn't choose that project. It was quite accidental. I, didn't, I, I was not even interested in the topic, but I realized how much uh, potential uh, to mitigate emissions and to adapt to climate change is there in the, Food and land use system. So it was really, it really changed my mind, uh, changed my my way of looking at things and then my way of looking at uh, climate change. And um, and then um, after that, I I didn't finish Hannah. Uh, I can go faster if you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, so after that, uh, I I went to. Um, I went to Indonesia to work in a in a circular economy project, basically helping uh, communities to implement waste management systems where they don't have anything. So basically implementing them from scratch. Uh, at the moment, many in many cities, like 60% of the population in Indonesia don't have any waste management system, and they end up throwing or burning all the all the waste. They don't have other solutions. So it was really looking uh, very holistically. At the, at the system within a, a, a city and helping them to implement these uh, waste management systems. Um, but as I said, on purpose was much more than just cool projects and employment opportunities. Um, so first, the coach uh, that, I, that I had really helped me to look at my own career through different lenses. Uh, I resisted to do some of the exercises that he was proposing because I felt they were not they were not for me but but eventually uh, by doing them uh, it it really helped me to uh, to to learn more about myself and to have different life uh, uh, life principles if not life goals I didn't really I, I never liked uh, development goals or having goals to achieve but but it did help me to, to look at my at my development and my life uh, through different lenses and different following different principles. Um, and then uh, I didn't really take so much advantage of, of the mentors, I, I think, but looking in retrospect, I, I do feel that they were a part of the big safety net that the program 
itself uh, that On Purpose program provides uh, for these challenging and transformational year. Um, and then the best part of the year was uh, for me to, to be part of this community and, and to, to meet the associates every Friday afternoon and, and to have this time to reflect and to, and to have trainings and to think about uh, impact and discuss about the impact in the pub. Um, so, so yeah, that was, that was really the, the best part of the year. And as I said, this was quite unexpected for me. I was just, at the beginning, I was just thinking of On Purpose as a platform to access cool uh, organizations. And, and it was much, much more than that. Uh, next slide. No, no, thank you. Um, so, so yeah, it did, it did serve also the, the purpose uh, that I wanted. So it, the, through On Purpose, I, I was actually able to to start working for Systemic as a full employee after after my um, after I finished the program and and yeah I, I I was living in Indonesia just until until a month ago uh, the 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 project was was almost like a dream for me at the uh, at the beginning then I I realized of things or or leadership styles that didn't really uh, Fit for me, and then eventually I, I left my position. But but it really uh, opened this door for me. Um, I don't think I could uh, otherwise have accessed uh, these opportunities. And, and yeah, I mean um, now um, I have new frameworks, new ways of thinking, uh, new plans, and then one comes to realize that uh, the transition really never ends. And so yeah. Uh, Thank you, Hannah. Thank you all. And happy to answer questions after the presentations. Thanks, Borja. I'm sorry for accidentally moving your slide. Okay. Cool. Oh, and this slide. This is our cohort. Borja was in my cohort, and this is us on our regular Friday check in during um, COVID 19. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Next, we're going to hear from Rob. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm happy to be able to talk to you this evening. Um, I finished the associate program just two and a half weeks ago. So, um, so a lot of the things I'm going to tell you are still very fresh um, and still very uh, recent for me. Um, so just going to talk about firstly, my journey to On Purpose and <clears throat> how I came to be to be on the program. Um, so after university, I guess like a lot of people, um, I wasn't so sure where I wanted to take my career. So I spent some time uh, traveling in Asia and I did um, English teaching in Japan for two years. Um, and having got that out of my system, I suppose, I came, I came home thinking that actually I was very interested in pedagogy and education and materials development. Um, so I came home and, and got into education publishing, which initially was um, textbooks, essentially school, school publishing. Um, and then over the course of my career, that became increasingly digitally focused. So I ended up at um, Cambridge University Press, where um, I was a product manager, essentially for online, so digital learning. Um, and that role, the role I was doing immediately before on purpose was, um, became, I suppose, really quite overwhelming in its, in its workload. The volume of work was really, really high. I managed a team of between five and 10 people, depending on the stage of the project. And I got to a stage where I was so busy managing those people that my own um i guess my own space for self development and learning was really was really lost um but when i did actually have time to to kind of think about where i wanted to be going and the work i wanted to be doing um i found myself really asking a couple of questions of myself um one of which was is this really serving me and the impact that i want to have in the world and secondly i think i was also asking whether I wanted to do the job that my manager was doing and continue in this industry. And I think ultimately I had to be really honest with myself and say that the answer to both of those questions 
um, became no, which was scary in its own way, but also um, really exciting to think that actually there were loads of other things that I could do that were hopefully going to bring more personal joy, but also um, have more social impact. And alongside um, my career, I'd been doing a lot of volunteering, particularly for a HIV charity called The Food Chain. Um, and we provide nutritional support services for people living with HIV in London. And I realized that it was actually when I was in the kitchen, um, volunteering with a bunch of other people where we would be cooking food for our service users that I really came alive and I felt like a real joy and a real engagement in the idea that I was doing something that directly helped people. Um, so I reduced my work hours, so I, I became part-time in my role. I did some more volunteering for the food chain. I also did some work for Sustain, the Alliance for Better Food and Farming. Um, and I really started to explore this growing interest that I had in nutrition and health. Um, and I did some short courses um, to, to kind of explore that a little bit further. Um, and then thinking, well, actually, maybe I want to take some kind of time out and perhaps have a transition year. Um, that's when I found on purpose and, and realized that this was probably 12 months where I could explore these interests and understand much more about the social sector um, and what career choices looked like um, in that space. So, yeah, so I can tell you a little bit about the experience of being on the programme. Um, so, yeah, I did two, two placements um, at Guy's and St Thomas's and Big Society Capital. Um, Guy's and St Thomas's is an urban health foundation um, which delivers um, health programmes in Lambeth and Southwark. Um, and Big Society Capital is a social impact investor. Um, and I did a range of projects at, at both placements. Um, at Guy's, I, um, I evaluated and redesigned the funding application process for NHS staff applying to the charity for funding. Um, and at BSC, a big society, um, one of the highlights there has been working on a research project into the finance and support needs of mental health enterprises. Um, so I've been working on preparing um, research that will ultimately inform uh, an investment vehicle or, or a, uh, an investment fund for small, inve uh, small mental health startups. Um, and I think just to say about both of those experiences coming in, I had, I had very little knowledge of what those organisations actually were doing, but also the skills involved within those organisations were, were mostly new to me um, and so so the ability to kind of learn really quickly in those placements was really important um, but I enjoyed both of them massively um, and I would just say this has been this has been said before but the the on purpose year was about a lot more than just those placements so I got to do loads of new things that I wouldn't have done otherwise like I did a um, an urban triathlon to raise money for guys in St Thomas's I did the big sleep out uh, in Trafalgar Square which is an event to raise money for homeless charities um, and I did some writing I wrote some blogs on topics of interest to me for the On Purpose website um, so it's really this this amazing opportunity just to understand um, new topics organizations and to sort of have these amazing conversations and meet people um, that that I really would never have, have been able to do had it not been for the programme. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just um, briefly, we've talked a lot about community already. And one, uh, one feature of the programme is that each cohort is um, asked to think about co-creating a project together. Um, and for me and my cohort, that ultimately became a series of events called Actionable. And these are each focused around a specific um, sustainability issue. So we've, um, we've had events focused on fast fashion, uh, the food system and ethical finance. And this was really a great opportunity to work with an amazing bunch of people to co-create something and put it out into the world and to work in 
in a, a very fluid group structure where we organized together where there was no hierarchy um, and ultimately I got to, to try lots of new things such as some public speaking and doing some marketing and um, social media kind of work that I'd never done before and so the sense of accomplishment in doing that was was really amazing um, so yeah is it really is about the cohort as much as the placements and the friends and networks that you build um, through the year uh, so next slide please um, yeah so just to finish up um, I'm two and a half weeks out from the ending of the program and I'm very lucky to have stayed on at Big Society Capital to do um, just a short-term contract delivering some research and engagement projects um, and one of the goals I had through the through the program really was to uh, explore becoming a, a charity trustee um, and yeah I got the opportunity to meet with lots of charities uh, and social enterprises through the year and decided to become a trustee of the garden classroom which offers nature experiences and forest school programs for children living in London so I've just started to do that and I feel that actually a, a lot of the skills and experience and knowledge that I've gained through this 12 months um, has really allowed me to add um, a ton of value already to to the the running of the charity um, so just to finish up on the final slide um, yeah I just wanted to finish my section with this um, quote from The Road Not Taken which is a poem by Robert Frost um, and I think just just to finish up this idea of taking the road less traveled is something that really resonates for me about on purpose and I think often doing that is not always the most obvious choice or the easiest choice but for me it's really been um, an amazing experience and a way of turning my career around and having some really enriching and impactful experiences so I leave you with that and, and I'm happy to take questions at the end as well. Cool well thank you so much um, everybody for taking the time to listen to that. Um, it's now a Q&A so um, if anybody's got any questions feel free to come off mute and, and ask. There was a question that was posted on the chat about the on-purpose matching process which I wanted to address so the matching process for um, associates and placements on on purpose um, is quite rigorous but basically what happens is we will sign up between 16 and 20 placements and 16 and 20 associates and once you get on the program you will be sent a placement summary for each of the potential placements and vice versa the placements are sent your cv and your video um, after that you you get the opportunity to rank the placements in order of your preference and they um, get the opportunity to do the same with you based on what comes back we put it all into a massive algorithm which um, puts gives us the best outcome for equally the associates and the placements and on the basis of that we will give you um, eight organizations that you then go on to meet at a matching day and then we apply the same process. You meet eight organizations and then you rank the organizations in order of preference and they um, do the same with you. Um, and then the same process applies. We put it, put it into an algorithm, um, which gives us the best um, outcome. The only slight difference with that process is we take into account things like if you have childcare or if you live very far away from a placement, things like that, um, we would take that into account in the final matching stage so i hope that answers um someone's question but um if you if there's anything else you want to ask please let me know are there any other questions from the chat camilla yes so we have a question from naomi i think i can allow you to ask your question if you like naomi hi can you hear me all right yes yeah. perfect great great sorry um so i had two questions actually uh one was i was wondering um, if the pandemic has affected at all the uh, number of placement organizations available to associates. Um, so obviously we know lots are struggling and um, being furloughed and all of that. So just wondering that. And the second question feels like a really silly question to ask. And you may have explained this and I may have missed it, but I was a bit unclear on the relationship between On Purpose and Charity Fast Track. Have, is there a partnership? Um, because it was quite fundraising heavy, and I was just wondering if there's been a shift in focus for On Purpose, or 
because it's very impact driven, of course, um, what that relationship was. That, that's all. Thank you. Um, so to answer the first question, so there's no, so basically this is just like a friendly partnership. We've come together to, to do a webinar to give you, to share with you some different options about how you can um, improve your career in the impact space. But there's no, there's no, beyond that, there's no um, formal partnership as it were. It's just that we're friendly and we've come together to do this event. Um, but they're, they're very much separate, the, the opportunities on offer. Uh, and in terms of your first question about um, COVID, so we have just launched our April 2020 cohort. And I guess one of the benefits of, of On Purpose is because we work with a range of different organizations. Um, to a certain extent, um, we were, I don't want to say shielded, but we, you know, we've just launched a cohort and we had 17 organizations and 17 placements, which is very much normal for us. Uh, and within that cohort, we had some larger organizations who are, um, I guess a bit more sustainable in 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 difficult times uh, and we also had for example um, an organization called Obbox who um, at, you know as an example of the type of place we work with who basically um, take um, odd shaped food that wouldn't normally get um, sold on supermarket shelves and creates delivery boxes so they're very focused on food waste and since the COVID pandemic they've seen their they had to actually shut down their website because um, they've seen their orders increase from something like 12,000 to over 25,000. And so they actually ended up taking on um, a couple more associates, or no, one more associate because of the pandemic, because we did have one placement that dropped out. But broadly speaking, um, the placements that we've worked with have been have been resilient. And because we work with a broad range of organisations, to a certain extent, we can, we can see who will need um, associates. At, at this time so i hope that answers your question but yeah please let me know. and hannah can i just uh, this is rich here if i could just have yeah that, sure uh, as well. um in terms of the partnership we're, we're really grateful for on purpose for sharing a space with us um in terms of fundraising there are two ways that you can do our course one with and one without a fundraising challenge i think the mentors have spoken brilliantly to to that and why it's so important for them um, what I would say is that, you know, 50% of the roles in the social impact space are about generating income for charities. So we're, we're unapologetic about making uh, uh, fundraising a part of what we do. And one of the other reasons that we've done that over the years is that for me, uh, charity careers should be accessible for everyone. And by having a part subsidized course, one of the things that we're able to do is offer uh, opportunities to, to qualify yourself and, and upskill yourself for charity careers that don't mean that you have to go and, uh, for instance, uh, live in London for a, for a, uh, for a complete career change, or and and one of the things that we're trying to change about the charity sector is that we recognise that when you have a more diverse um, and skilled workforce, then actually all charities improve as a result of that, and and certainly um, diversity within our sector in a number of ways in terms of diversity of skill, background, thought, perspective, is all really important for us because um, we can be doing better as a sector. And in terms of the uh, opportunities for people who don't feel like fundraising, you can take on the unlimited programme, which doesn't ask you to do uh, a fundraising element to the course. In that case, uh, the fundraising aspect is probably one out of six modules that you'd be doing. Um, in terms of the other stuff that we do, we, we look very seriously about how social impact is achieved. And um, for instance, our, our modules on co-production uh, are all written with the understanding of the basics of actually how organizations plot and create content and, and services for people because effectively um, we should be a sector that's doing with not not doing to um, we're led by our experts in terms of the, the content and we hope that people enjoy it as much as i meant as they've been on tonight and um, do as well but i'm happy if anybody has any questions afterwards with regard to the fundraising challenge i'm really happy to spend some time offline with them thanks I question from Hannah. I'm going to unmute you if you want to ask. Yeah, hi. I think it's a question for Hannah. Um, so I'm someone who's uh, got work experience not in the impact sector, but I've been studying a master's, which I think is about social change and innovation. So do you consider that as someone that would still be able to apply to the programme? Yeah, so to do on purpose, there's no prerequisite to have any um, official work experience in in the impact sector. So a lot of the people that we work, well, probably the majority of people we work with um, have 
have more commercial experience so we have a lot of people that come from consultancy from finance so there's no there's no need to have had a specific work experience um within the sector the fact that you've got a master's um what was it? i can't remember what you i didn't I catch what innovation you said. Management, but in innovation management but in particular looking at social change and yeah so like so that. that would be that would definitely be um attractive to us um if as part of your application but there's no we're really looking for your motivation to um to want to change and also beyond that we think that there is a benefit in people that have developed skills uh in a more commercial setting bringing that into into the impact sector but beyond that i would say that as part of your application and as part of the interview process it's really it's really clear to articulate well um your motivation for wanting to develop a career in impact and any kind of anything that you can show to demonstrate that either within your current work even if it is within a commercial setting or through volunteering or or any other th any anything else that shows that you've got a desire to to have an impact would would be good but there's no you don't have to have worked in the impact sector the point of the program really is to try and move you into a job with more more impact i don't know if rob or borja you wanted to add anything to that at all or i probably covered it but yeah there was a question about um, skills that I saw. Um, I don't know if that's been addressed, but if somebody wanted to speak about it. There is a question from Rosalind. I'm going to unmute her. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, fab. OK. Um, yeah, I was just wondering a bit about uh, the different types of placements and how many are kind of skills dependent. So, for example, if you've come from a finance background, that's helpful because two placements are finance based or whether they're all quite generalist. Um, and then just a bit on how we get allocated the placements, which I guess sort of feeds off the, the last question. So. Um, is it that we pick based on kind of our existing skills and where we'd like to improve or it's sort of a mix of the organisation and us and you working out kind of where people are best placed? Yeah, so I think um, I'll answer the second part of the question, but I would, in terms of the skills, um, Rob, I think you had quite an interesting experience with your um, through On Purpose with the placements that you did. I wonder if you wanted to talk a bit about the skills that you... Mm -hmm. within your placements um or yeah 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 so um so in both of my placements i ended up so so just to go back a step i don't have a finance background my background mm -hmm. as i said is in product development and project management um but i did a placement at guys and st thomas's charity and part of my work there was involved in the impact investing portfolio so it was helping to develop a pipeline of investment funds that the charity would deploy some of its endowment into. So that was completely new for me. I had never done anything like that before, but I think at the matching or as part of the matching process, the placements are the placement hosts are looking for your enthusiasm and your your desire to have impact and your general skill set. And I think they understand that you're going to be able to learn really quickly when you get into the placement. And that is certainly how it worked out for me. Um, similarly at Big Society Capital, that is another social impact investor where I've spent my second placement. And, and I've been able to use my existing skill set and flex that with, with learning on the job, which I think is, is really what the program is about. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry if you, if it is that you want to do something that's investment related and you don't have a finance background, I, I that's not going to stop you. Cool. Thank you. And I think beyond that, so, so the, to the answer, the second part of your question that it's a little bit of a balancing act. So you have, so you, so you, most people come to on purpose because they want to try out a new job roles, test new skills, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes the placements, um you know if they're if, if they're an education charity for example and something from a teaching background they'll be like brilliant we want that so across the year you we try and balance it so that you have two different experiences and two placements and what and an experience that meets your needs and both the placements needs 
So for example, for my two placements, I came from a background where I worked in advertising and marketing uh, in a financial setting. And my first placement was um, in, a in an arts charity where I was doing research, which was completely different to what I did before. But my second placement was working in an impact investing fund on building their brand um, uh, and communication strategy, which was very much more aligned with what I did before. But actually, I quite liked because it was what I did before, but with it, with impact as um, at, at its core and trying to change the financial system. Whereas before, I felt like I was very much operating within it. And I think what Borba said about being being given a purpose being given to you versus finding your own purpose is really the transition that you make throughout the throughout the program. Hopefully, well, that's what I did anyway. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions? Everyone all ready for dinner now, probably, I think. <laughs> no? I think there were some questions around um, EU citizenship and applying for on purpose, um, which it might be better to pick up. If you, if, you e if you drop us an email with that, we can probably respond to that more, more directly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think we covered most of them. There was a question around um, that Rachel asked about the type of organizations that we work with. Yeah, so um, we work with a, a wide variety of different organizations, some more commercial, uh, some pure charities. So for example, as part of our current cohort at the moment, we've, we work with Save the Children um, and the Samaritans at, at one end, but then on the more commercial end, I've already mentioned um, Oddbox. We also work, we have worked in the past with um, governments. So we've had a couple of placements at the Department of Media, Culture and Sport. Uh, I'll be done in five minutes. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so we cover a wide range of different types of organizations. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right, don't worry. <laughs> I didn't realise I was... <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, but if you sign up for the... Um, for the, uh, to apply for On Purpose, you should get put into um, uh, a, a sort of, um, I guess, an application process that will give you um, more information about the placements, about the coaching, about the mentoring, and, and so on. So, yeah, there'll be more information there. Cool. Well, thank you everybody very much for joining. Um, unless there's any other questions, um, I, I will leave it there. But if you've got any questions, please just drop us a line. And similarly for um, Charity Fast Track, you can contact Rich. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. And thanks. Bye. Right.